Mine's probably equally shit because I don't think it matters. As perhaps the most accomplished procrastinator on Simon's staff, that'd be Dave who wrote this script, not me. I'm Simon. I'm well aware. Excuse me. I'm well aware that YouTube contains some really bizarre stuff. I've now had to go as far as blocking YouTube in my work laptop and iPad purely to make my working day more financially viable. Having said that, I still have YouTube on my phone, and from time to time, I find myself returning to reality an hour and a half after just quickly looking something up for research purposes. Yeah, it's true. YouTube can be a bit of a hole, can't it? In fact, I almost exclusively watch YouTube on my phone. I was amazed. I went into my analytics for some of my channels, and it's like the number of people who watch this on a television is so high. And the number of times, like, anyone, some, anytime someone writes me on Twitter, it's often like my face on a TV. I'm amazed. Like, I really thought, like, you know, because you just think everyone's like you, right? It's the kind of the default position. That everyone's just watching on their phones, but people are watching on televisions. Hello. My kid gets very excited when, like, you know, she's we have YouTube on the TV at home and she'll watch this kid stuff and sometimes like a video with me and she'll be like, Dad <laughs> it's, which I like. The power of the algorithm is truly amazing. As you're already watching this video, I don't need to tell you that a lot of YouTube content is pure entertainment gold. You're goddamn right. But some of the channels that are available are just weird. And in today's episode, we're going to look at some of them. Brace yourself. We're going in. Hello, everybody. Just before we continue with today's video, I do want to talk about our fantastic sponsor today. And that is Ridge. Are you looking for the best gift this holiday season? Well, say goodbye to Bulky Willis. You know someone in your life who's got one of those fat leather wallets stuffed with receipts? It's probably your dad. <laughs> It was me. It's definitely my dad. Well, this is the perfect Christmas gift for that person, or perhaps even yourself. It's the Ridge Wallet. It expands to hold 10 cards. It's even got room for cash on the back. Plus, it's got RFID blocking, so no one can digitally pickpocket you. And then there's the Ridge key case. I love this as well. These are my work keys. They go in here like a Swiss Army knife. No more jangling around in your pocket. It's perfect. If you buy these two things together, by the way, you can get 30% off, which is very nice. Look, they've got 30 plus colors and styles including leather i love the leather one i'm actually using yeah the burnt titanium one that's kind of my go-to but i think i will swap it out for the for the leather one plus they've got air tag attachments so you'll never lose your essentials again and speaking about essentials there's the hyper lime collection and the ceramic powder that's uh <laughs> maybe not a color i'd personally choose but uh you know to each their own i like the green one that's a vibe. So you can check out these new collections, the leather one, the key case, everything you need by going to ridge.com slash blaze. Shop the holiday sale by going to ridge.com slash blaze and get up to 30% off through December the 20th. Plus, if you use my link, enter your email for a chance to win a Ridge bundle worth $4,000. No purchase necessary. Thanks to Ridge for sponsoring this video and now back to it. Will it flush? Really? <clears throat> if you were the was diagnosed with mesothelioma that sounds like an absolute plumbing nightmare unless you're like a really shady individualist like you just do will it flush but you do it at public toilets or like you just go into like cafes and stuff because otherwise you'd just constantly be calling a plumber wouldn't you and be like again again Really? Why have you flushed this time? Almost everybody, at some point or another, has found the need to dispose of something unconventional by flushing it down the toilet. While I appreciate the tangents, usually Simon's thing, it would be remiss of me not to quickly share this flushing story with you all. As any publican will tell you, one of the more irritating aspects of customers is the propensity for a small minority of them to retire to the toilets during a drinking session and partake in a certain white powder. And it's lying, and it's lying, and it's lying, yes, yes, yes! <clears throat> He's super dead. What's that scene in American Psycho where they're doing it in the bathroom and he's like, and uh, the guy's like, it's not strong enough. And Bateman's like, I think if we do enough of it, we're probably going to be okay. Now, I would be a hypocrite if I completely condoned the use of this powder, but unfortunately, anybody who chooses to take it on a licensed premises is putting that license in jeopardy. One Saturday night, after a group of lads set off towards the toilets in my pub to, as it were, powder their noses, literally, I hatched a plan. After waiting for a few minutes, I walked over to the toilets, kicked the door open, and sent my huge German shepherd bounding inside the while shouting, POLICE! DRUGS DOG! Oh my god, Dave, you psycho. Those guys gonna be like. 
Although I did not personally witness the result, I was later informed that an entire supply weekend supply of recreational powder was poured away into the toilet. The lads never did come back after that, and I'm still not sorry. Although toilets don't usually struggle with disappearing small amounts of white powder, they are designed with a specific purpose in mind. And as my friend, who works for the water board unblocking the drains of people who abuse their facilities, will tell you, flushing the wrong things can have inconvenient consequences. <laughs> Dang it, Adam, golf balls again. Ah, this is why we shut off your water. Oh, I was using them to make a point. Watch what you flush, man. Dave, mate, are we still in the introduction? I feel like you you, you were like, will it flush? You, you tricked us. You were like, yes, Simon, the video's beginning. We're getting to will it flush. And then we're like two tangents deep, Dave. What's happening? Stop it! Not to worry though, next time you find yourself with an unstoppable urge to flush something down the toilet, this channel is here to help. Operating under the use YouTube username at Weird Stuff Videos with 4.34 million subscribers, holy sh. The Will It Flush segment appears to exist entirely to find out what you can, in fact, flush down the toilet. This is one of those channels that I'd discover and I'd be like, this is amazing. But after I've watched about four videos, I'd be like, okay, I get it. And then I'd never watch it again. Which is like because it's a cool concept but i feel it just gets a bit boring after a while kind of like no, i'm just joking the tests carried out by this channel include but are no means limited to m&m's 137 million views okay never mind i take it all back this is obviously an absolute gold mine Jelly. coca-cola sprite miranda balloons and surprise eggs 78 million views coffee and candy 3.9 million and will it flush a hundred crazy flushes? 3.2 million views. You're jealous. You know, fuck this. I'm just going to start flushing shit down my toilet at work and make videos about it. So I bet you're all on the edge of your seats waiting for me to tell you just exactly which of those things can be successfully flushed. Unfortunately, I can't tell you. Although the videos do include audio, I've yet to find one in which the host actually speaks. And because of this, I have no idea as to the results of any of these critical experiments. Well, a couple of things, Dave. One, I'll explain to the audience who's new here. Dave is blind. Who wrote the script so that's why he can't see what's happening and secondly i wasn't really wondering i'm just not that interested i guess this just isn't i'm just not one of those 137 million people who has to ask has to know does coke go down the toilet i mean i just feel like the answer would be yes because it's a liquid and if we're talking about a can or a bottle the answer is no because it's a can or a bottle problem solved if anybody out there is genuinely interested i'm afraid you'll have to go and research the matter yourselves don't worry dave no one is keep watching this video it's more entertaining i promise especially if you're blind but please please do not feel the need to tell me in the comment section i genuinely do not care the scp foundation have you ever fallen asleep while watching youtube and then woken up hours later listening to a video selected by the algorithm and wondered just exactly what was going on in the world i no no i haven't because I don't know, I don't watch YouTube like that, but I do watch Netflix. I remember one day I was like super hungover or whatever, and I just put Netflix on. I was like, oh, oh. I was watching a show where they have discs in people's necks. They put the disc, and it's like, that sounds weird, but it's like somehow to download your consciousness, and they eat tigers. Like, I don't know what the fuck was going on in that show, but it was really good. And I'm watching it like super hungover, and then I fall asleep, and I'm not really sure what I've seen or what I've watched because I'm so hungover. And just a few hours later, I wake up. And I'm like, oh, it stopped. I feel slightly better. And the Netflix was like, are you still there? And I'm like, oh, I mean, yes. How long has it been? Is there a point where Netflix is like, are you still there? You've been watching a long time. And it's like, yes, Netflix, I'm still here. I'm just desperately hungover. You got a little bit trashed last night. You got a little bit wasted. Yeah. This is exactly how I discovered the SCP Foundation. So, well, what is it? Originally launched in 2008, the SCP Foundation YouTube channel is a collaborative writing project based around a fictional organization that deals with various scientific anomalies. This sounds kind of interesting. My dear sweet child. The organization, whose initials stand for Secure, Contain, and Protect, works tirelessly to ensure that the general public is not greatly inconvenienced by these anomalies, even going so far as to erase the memories of those that come into contact with them. Is this some sort of, like... It feels like this would be a tie-in to a TV show where the SCP Foundation are the bad guys, that sort of thing. The scope of weirdness that this channel covers is genuinely impressive. One video tells the story of a statue which will immediately shatter the spinal column of anybody who looks directly at it. Holy shit, okay, that's weird. I mean, that's such a strange concept. It's like, how many drugs were you on when you came up with that? Don't blink. Don't even blink. 
blink and you're dead. Another tells the story of a disembodied set of red eyes that can appear in any reflective surface and once observed will cause the immediate death of the observer. That's less creative. The shattering of the spine, though, it's just like what? Your spine just suddenly like turns into fragments. And then you're like, blah, blah, blah. I mean, you'd die, right? Surely you'd die. And is it the spine? What's this? Ah, it's the spinal cord, the things that is in there. But I don't think your spinal cord's going to be okay if your spine shatters, right? No, that would be actually bad. However, it's not all instant death and shattered spines. <laughs> One video tells the story of an invisible six-handed being with a blade for a tail that for some reason develops a fanatical interest in cookery and composing music. Is this, like creepy pastas is this just a creepy pasta channel while all these come across as the work of somebody in possession of both lsd and a keyboard some of them such as the story of a completely condemned town in russia that plays host to some sort of unstoppable virus are borderline believable when you're half asleep and it was one such story that had me waking up and questioning everything i knew about reality believability aside most of the stories are very well written and the channel has amassed 2.1 million subscribers this like it does sound kind of cool like, I love these kind of, like, semi-fictional sort of things. It sounds like a really cool channel. Like... <laughs> I'd probably watch this. I myself considered submitting a story until I found out that the writers don't get paid for their work. Wait. Wait, Dave, do I pay... No, I'm just kidding. Of course I pay Dave. Of course I do. I think. With mushrooms. Don't get me wrong. I respect and admire those who write purely for the joy of it, but for me, the most enjoyable part of the creative process is the payment at the end. Fucking savage. You guys are getting paid? Yeah, me too. When YouTube send me my money every month, I'm like, ah, oh, all worth it, baby. As for the SCP Foundation, it's not true. I love you guys. I No, I mean, I genuinely, it's like, I feel like I just need to clarify. I genuinely enjoy what I do. It's great. Would I do it if I wasn't getting paid? I mean, no, because I need money to live. But if I had all the money sorted, which, I mean, I have enough money. And I continue to do it. I love it. It's great. Like, it's wild that I get to do this. Yeah, you don't need to justify it. I feel very sweaty. Oh, God, I am very sweaty. Look at that. Oh, God. Oh, no. Ah. <laughs> Having said that, I know. <laughs> I don't know why I had to share that with you. I just like touched my arms in a weird way <laughs> and realized that they're all wet. I don't know why I'm not even wearing a jacket. I feel naked. <laughs> ah! Having said that, I now spend three hours a week watching their videos. Apart from using Facebook Messenger to attempt to drag Danny down into my own procrastination hell, it's my favorite waste of time. Hydraulic Press Channel. Oh, I know this one. I don't know about any of you, but the first thing I would ever do if I came into possession of a hydraulic press would be to rummage through my workshop for the most indestructible items I could find and then test their indestructibility against my newly acquired machine lori oh my lord view and silter at least seems to be on the same level as me when it comes to childish antics everyone's on the same level dave i remember i posted a tweet like ages ago i think it was one of my most liked tweets for some reason and it's like i'd ordered a drill because i had to drill some stuff in my office and i like got it and i was like trying out all these different blades on it and stuff and then i was like and I dr drilled a hole in my desk and I posted like bought a drill drilled a hole in my desk <laughs> bought a drill now there's a hole in my desk and apparently people found that quite amusing but it is like I'm the, the same way like if I buy something I bought a leaf blower recently and I'm just like out there and it rains and I'm just blowing water around everywhere it was awesome the description section of his channel tells 8.37 million subscribers want to see stuff getting crushed by hydraulic press this is the right channel for you new video and new stuff to crush every week some of his top videos include can you fold paper more than seven times with a hydraulic press seen it crushing hydraulic press crushing adamant adamantium with a hydraulic press and which is the strongest helmet not seen that one although i was originally going to write something about just how ridiculous and pointless this channel was i'm afraid i can't do that anymore no it's amazing it's great after showing it to my six-year-old son we spent about an hour and a half watching things being crushed speculating on how much force it would take and just generally having a good time for the record i think we found the bowling ball to be the most interesting now i would not i think i've seen that as well this is a good channel it's a straight up good channel i like it now i would not be <laughs> so far dave's tried to present me weird channels it's like now nah, two of these i'd really like and Dave seems to as well. Now, I would not be a writer worthy of this channel if I didn't look a little more deeply into this, and it appears that I'm not the only person to have a sudden change of heart. Lots of people seem to have watched this channel with plans to ridicule it afterward, but although as a species we really like creating things, my research indicates that for the majority of people there is something incredibly therapeutic about watching things being slowly but inevitably destroyed. Yeah, I love just I've always loved destroying shit. Like if my parents were ever like, yeah, we need to empty out the garage, I'd be like, I'll do it! I'll do it! Do you want anything in there? 
And they'll be like, nope. And I'll be like, cool. And I'll just spend the afternoon getting sweaty with a sledgehammer, just like smashing shit up. I remember once my parents were like, yeah, okay, go, go there. And then um, I must have been like 15 or 16. And then they came out later and they're like, what's that a pile of? And I'm like, well, that's the chairs. And they're like, oh God, the, the antique chairs are in there. And I'm like, you told me everything could be smashed up. And they're like, those antique chairs are like 200 quid each. And I'm like, <laughs> my bad. Or well, like eight of them or something. <laughs> Sorry. Who punished him severely. But inevitably, I'm not entirely sure what this says about human beings as a whole, but it certainly seems to be true. I wonder. I love a bit of YouTube craziness as, mu as much, if not more so, than the next person. If you feel the same way, then you'll not find a more eclectic collection of bizarre content than videos posted on I Wonder TV. According to the description, I produce mini docs that take you on a journey to places far away while telling unique stories about people, animals, automobiles, culture, and beyond. That's. It, it sounds pretty generic. Sounds pretty good. Are you okay? The sort. Uh, I'd definitely. <laughs> It would probably be like, has like 700 million subscribers or something, and I'll be like, I don't know, I'd reword that. I, I, I don't think the culture channel description matters very much, but still, mine's probably equally shit because I don't think it matters. The sort of channels that you could happily waste an entire day on. While this is undoubtedly true, the description does not come close to preparing an unsuspecting YouTube consumer for the levels of weirdness that they're about to experience. Some of the stuff is fairly mundane. For example, there is an interesting video about a guy who has made it his life's mission to combat the rising numbers of Burmese pythons in the Florida Everglades, a problem that he claims is so bad that much of the native wildlife has disappeared. It. Although I'm not entirely sure of the extent of the problem, finding that out would require much more research into the Everglades than I'm prepared to carry out. See? That wasn't so hard. But I like how Dave's like, yeah, I'm in it for the money and I'm not going to try that hard. And I'm like... Carry on. It seems unlikely that one man driving around in a truck with a Glock, removing snakes and trying not to be eaten by alligators, is unlikely to make a huge difference. Americans. It sounds like this guy's just like having a bit of fun, isn't he? Nevertheless, assuming there actually is a Burmese python problem, he's probably not making it worse. So good for him. Another video on this channel that might actually be considered useful is entitled Surviving a Black Mamba Bite. The Black Mamba. Now, you might think that this video can take useful tips and hints as to what exactly you should do if you're unfortunate enough to be bitten by this highly venomous snake, but you would be wrong. What the video actually contains is a man who claims that he has become entirely immune to almost any snake venom simply by allowing them to bite him and injecting their venom over and over again. Personally, I do not recommend that. I mean, well, the video delivers, it's like how to become immune to how to like survive a Mac Bamba bite, where it seems like this way it's it's clickbait but it delivers <laughs> that's like my life clickbait but deliver because otherwise people don't watch and then your video doesn't get served to more people it's like youtube 101. while this might sound insane there is actually some scientific basis behind it as anybody who regularly drinks alcohol or indulges in recreational drugs will tell you it is possible for your body to build up a tolerance to almost anything in fact peanut allergies in children have been cured by exposing the child to micro doses of peanuts every day while slowly increasing the amount to help build up a tolerance that being said this guy allows a black mamba to bite him four times within the first minute of the video and i don't care what anybody says that is just straight up weird i feel like i've seen this video a long time ago in a galaxy far far away still not that unusual as far as things on youtube go but there is more much much more the video felicity cadlets rossi is married to her zombie doll kelly which has 2.2 million views, showing an American lady, you'll have to forgive me, I'm not all good at, I'm not good at American accents, who claims to have married a zombie doll that she bought online at the age of 12. Honestly, this sounds like Vice. <laughs> he sounds like the sort of documentaries that you'd see on Vice. She does everything with the doll, including taking her shopping for clothes and going out to dinner with her. While undoubtedly unusual behavior, it appears that Felicity uses the doll as some sort of emotional support constant. Even from the short video, it's incredibly obvious that her life has been filled with tragedy, and as crazy as it might appear to outsiders, this zombie is apparently the only thing that has stuck by her throughout her entire life. Sticking with bizarre coping mechanisms for a moment, the channel also contains a video called I Live as an adult baby 24 7 again i feel like i've seen this 
a long time ago. I'm like, you know, when you just fall down a YouTube hole and you end up at like, oh yeah, I, I'll, I'll watch Charlotte as Louder Baby 24-7. I'll, I'll watch that. Sure, why not? <laughs> i got nothing better to do today. It tells the story of a woman. Oh, okay, maybe I haven't seen it because in my mind it's a dude. What are you watching? In order to escape the stresses and pressures of adult life, spends all her free time dressing and acting like a two-year-old. This involves, but is not limited to, playing with baby toys, wearing and using diapers, oof, and using bottles and pacifiers. She claims it's very relaxing. There's nothing relaxing about shitting yourself in a nappy. And it's probably that if your health, or a diaper as you'd uh, call it in America, for your health than drinking two bottles of wine after a stressful day at work. Don't know about that, Dave. Only two bottles? Come taste the wine. If you add to the mix videos such as On All Levels Except Physical, I Am A Wolf with Naya Akami, I Only Eat A Raw Meat Diet, and Biggest Hands In The World, the real-life Popeye dresses as Wreck-It Ralph for kids, what are these titles? You know what's good. Then you really have a channel worthy of the title Bizarre. John Drinks Water Up to this point, the channels that I've listed have been, to some degree, at least interesting, with the possible exception of Will It Flush. I will at some point return to all of them during one bout of work avoidance or another. This cannot be said about the channel John Drinks Water. This channel, which has 71,000 subscribers and has posted 9,900 videos. Oh my lord, I don't think I've made that many videos. It's not fair to make me do math. It's described as the internet's premier water drinking series, the show that unlocked the web's passion for drinking water. Now I know what you're thinking. Drinking water must be some sort of slang term created by the latest generation of young people in order to confuse people over 30. I mean, nobody could have possibly built up such a subscriber base purely by posting videos of themselves drinking water. Right? Well, wrong. For those of you who find watching paint dry to be too stimulating, you can now watch John in his never-ending quest to rid the world of bottled H2O. There do appear to be a couple of non-water drinking... There do appear to be a couple of non-water drinking... There do appear to be a couple of non-water drinking related videos on the channel, but for the most part, that's it. The only interesting thing about these videos is the variation in popularity. For example, the most popular one on the channel, John Drinks Water Number 1, has, at the time of writing, 391,000 views, whereas at the other end of the scale we have John Drinks Water Number 4,120, which has 582. As far as I can tell, the content is fairly similar, and the view counts don't necessarily appear to correspond with the amount of time that they've been available for exciting aqua falls to consume so just what is it that people find so fascinating about this stultifyingly boring channel? Well, if we look at some of the comments on the video, it appears to be a cross between people who don't understand why somebody would do something so boring for so long, people who are genuinely impressed that he has kept it up for so long, and even a few people, such as at Sam, T-O-7-Y-N, who believe that what he does is some sort of art form and comment stuff like this. This is real art. The elegance and uniqueness of this video is rare, and you can tell he made this from the bottom of his heart. It's stuff like this that makes you realize how beautiful life is. Tentious twat. All right, Sam, how much LSD did you do today? I would be the first person to admit that I don't really understand art, but either this comment has successfully achieved an entire new level of sarcasm, or I am truly an old man. I really hope it's sarcasm. Or Sam did LSD. That's the end of today's video. Thanks for being here. I feel naked. <laughs> ah!